Hello, my name is Dave Moreira, and today we're going to talk about getting started with vSphere and APUs, which is also known as Distributed Services Engine and previously known as Project Monterey. In previous videos, we talked about the benefits of having vSphere running on data processing units, being able to offload services, VM consolidation, better performance and reduction of resource utilization within the x86 host. We also talked about how the connections internally work for from a physical standpoint, and that we require those servers to be provided by OEMs that are already configured, already cable, and have the proper firmware and drivers for the data processing units. Now, the OEMs offer different flavors of DPUs. So we have NVIDIA, for example, we have AMD, Pensando, and it, we have other partners coming on, like Intel as well, and many more. So, but how did we get started? So one of the things I mentioned was that it is really easy to get started with DPUs. We are not really exposing a whole lot to you from a management perspective. We, I did mention we install ESXi on the DPUs, but we're not showing that DPU as an additional host. So let's say, let's go to a vCenter. We're going to log into a vCenter, and underneath, you're going to look, uh, you're going to see your data center uh, clusters, and you're going to see your host. So you have host one, host two, host three, host four, right? Once we install ESXi, this does not change, right? So we're not exposing that as a separate host. And no, you cannot run VMs in that DPU, even though that has ESXi. But how do we install ESXi? Well, I mentioned how the physical connections have the VMC talks to a daughter card, the daughter card connects to the DPU, and that is how we can configure everything. So when we go and install ESXi on a brand new host, let's say you went out and talked to one of your OEMs and you said, hey, I want a DPU ready node for VMware. And they said, sure, Mr. Customer, I have just a few options for you. Which one do you want? You're going to pick your host, CPUs for x86, your DPU type, speed, etc. And you're ready to install. So you would go just normally, you can go to your out of band, your iDrag, ILO. And in that window, you're going to load your ISO. So you're going to connect your ISO, boot up your server. Once this server is booting up, what's going to happen is that that internal connection is going to talk to the BMC and it's going to say, OK, I see a DPU. So as you're booting up, your ISO is picking up. So now you're installing ESXi. And when it's going through the process of installing ESXi, it's going to say, OK, I see a server. So this is your x86. And, but I also see a DPU. Would you like to install ESXi 8? You say, sure, that's why I'm here. So you say, OK, I'm going to install it on my x86 host. But I also have the option to install it on a DPU by simply checking a box, nothing else. The process after this is the same, right? You will get your EULA, and then you're going to accept, move on, username, password. And after that process is done, same exact process with or without DPU, the only difference is this checkbox at the beginning. We call this the unified installation for ESXi. This is going to go out and install ESXi on both the DPU and your x86 host at the same time. So why is that important? Not only is that easy, but it also maintaining the same version on both locations. Now you have two instances of ESXi. However, logically, it's one ESXi host, right? From here, we're able to not only offload services to the DPU, but also have that consolidation and all the features that we talked about. Now, if you go back to our vCenter and mention how we're not exposing 
this DPU with the SXI as an additional host. So this is host number one, which is this. And host number one has a DPU. Actually, all of them have DPUs because it's on the same cluster. And I did mention before, they have to be the same, same DPU type, et cetera. So they all have DPUs. We're not showing anything underneath. But there's several things inside that is uh, showing as performance for the CPU and uh, of the data processing unit, performance metrics, et cetera, so that we can see from the UI. So when we're talking about getting started, installing is very simple. What is the next process, the next step? So this is step number one. Step number two, it is now to tell vCenter to go out and make all these connections. So we're going to offload NSX services. So we have NSX. We have an NSX server here, NSX manager. And we're going to make that connection through a distributed switch on that cluster. On so we create a distributed switch. So we have already connected NSX to vCenter. They both know about each other. We have the correct versions there. And these are going to be configured as your NSX host. right? Also, when we're creating the VDS, these are going to be NSX VDS. It's going to be connected. It's going to inherit those properties down. And the connection is made through here. When we go through the creation of the distributed switch, there is a new checkbox on vSphere 8 that is going to say, do you want to uh, services offload for data processing units, something similar to that. And again, it's nothing more than a checkbox. So if you say offload, you want to offload, yes or no. So that is going to enable the offload capabilities on the virtual distributed switch. Then we're going to be add, we, we're going to add each one of those hosts to the VDS, just like you do now. Uh, but the only option, the only difference was that checkbox. So now we're talking about one checkbox here, one checkbox here. Next step is now to configure this host for NSX. When we go out to NSX and we configure this host, we're going to push that configuration down. Right? It's going to say, OK, I'm going to push this down to configure this host to be uh, have NSX agent on them. But guess what? The DPUs are part of this host. They also have ESXi. So now, those DPUs will be also inheriting that configuration. So the DPUs will get the NSX agent installed. And that's how we can offload and install those services on the DPU itself. Now we can do that because we're leveraging our own technology. So we're using VMware Lifecycle Management to do that. So once we go and push that configuration, VLCM kicks in. It's going to check the host. It's going to load that um, image and push that image down to the host and the DPUs underneath that host. They're inherited. They're one logical unit. Although they're two separate instances of ESXi, they work as one, one brain, and they work as one together. Now, I did mention VLCM. So at this point, we have completed the process. We enable, we install the SXI by checking a box. We enable the offload, and we push the agent down to the host and the data processing units just by clicking a few buttons. Very simple, simple process. From now on, after we have onboarded, there's the option to also do the upgrades, right? So we can upgrade your host from A to A1 or A2, whatever comes next. But we can still leverage VLCM to do all that, only managing the host, not adding anything additional, no extra work. We're not doubling the amount of hosts that you have to manage. We're not running VMs inside the DPUs. We're using the DPU to run those services that we can offload on that. But the management piece of that, the configuration piece, the installation part of it, it's very simple. Checkbox here, checkbox there, push the image, you're done. Thank you.